Hopefully, some lunch will brighten up my disappointing day. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Jocelyn. Jocelyn, nice to see you. How long have you been here, my darling? I have been here for two years. Two years? In June. Yeah, probably two years. I'm sorry. Two years. Yeah. And is your father going to buy you a hotel? Never gonna happen. Even if I was like, please, I want it, just because I'm bored. Not gonna happen. Right, what would you recommend? Do you want to start with an appetizer, maybe? Yeah. What's the soup of the day? Broccoli cauliflower. Yeah, I'll try one of those. OK. Uh, entrees. Uh, let's go for the fish, the walleye strip. OK. Um, man, uh, it's a huge menu. How, how many's in the kitchen? Uh, two. Two chefs. Mm -hmm. How do you get this food fresh with only two chefs in the kitchen and a menu with literally 35, 40 dishes on there? You don't. Does it need rice? Our menu here is huge. I wish we could use better ingredients here in Van and Reno. They don't want to spend. I would not spend my money here at the restaurant. No. I think the food sucks. How are you, Mandy? Hi, how You're are busy. you? You're always running around. Yeah. Amazing. Um, how long have you been general manager? Um, two years. Two years. No disrespect, you don't look like a general manager. Right. I'm not that anymore. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Seriously? So seriously. Did you have a falling out with them? Because no. no. Everybody's incompetent, apparently. Really? I'm sick of not really being the general manager. Um, I kind of feel like I'm being pulled in all different directions. I don't really have a say in anything. How would you describe the owners? Vanda's borderline sociopath. Um, the other one, I don't know. I can't describe her. She's never here. So. Wow. I appreciate your honesty. Thank you. Wow, Mandy seems pissed. I suppose if I was working as hard as she is and the owner thought the staff were the problem, I'd be pissed too. Thank you. This is a broccoli cauliflower. Right. Get you a new drink. Thank you, man. Thank you. Mm, it smells burnt. Ah, it's fucking burnt. <coughs> so sorry. Taste it. Just a small bit. Look. Mm -mm. It is absolutely fucking oh, disgusting. Oh. Does the chef not care? Mm. No? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think the cooks care anymore. But I feel like a lot of us have gotten to that point. Mm. OK. Walleye fish strip. Which isn't a strip, it's like a ball. Honestly. Yeah. How hard is that thing? I've never had it, because I don't like it. Is it, it fresh or frozen? Frozen. But it looks like crap, so I wouldn't eat it. Jesus Christ. That's what it yeah. takes. Uh, yeah. That is disgusting. Man. I mean, what's wrong with this place? What's... What? Everything. Who's the most assertive about the sisters? Vanda. Because Rena's not here. No. How committed are they to running the business? Don't care. I think they look at it as like, well, I own it, so we can do whatever we want. No. Sleep till 3 in the afternoon, keep the bar open till 5 what? in the morning. I mean... Wow. That's loud, that music. It is loud. Oh, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I just need a little piece of quiet. Oh, um, not you a good? Problem. That's crazy, no? Yes, it is. I mean, it's like the blind leading the blind in there because there's no discipline. That you know, I do know. Ben's checked out, Brian's never checked in, and uh, they're all blaming each other. Yeah, I do know there's no, there's no discipline, there's no communication, no. there's none of it. No. What's the problem with him stepping up and dealing with issues. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he, he's not fully um, experienced in certain no. de departments. No. Are they hosting concerts? Are they... Uh, is it a frat party hangout? Is it a college? I mean, how can they call themselves a hotel? That's, that's the difference. That's the part that we need to try to separate, and I've been saying it for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Good evening. Beach front end. Liza speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Liza. We're in room 20. Bad reaction. She had to take steroids, and it's supposed to be a non-smoking room. I'll be right with you. Ryan, there's two guests have checked in upstairs. Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's got an issue with an allergy because the room stinks of smoke. It'd be nice to just come up and see them or try and calm the situation down. So the lady's got an allergy, and she's already had to take a steroid, and her eyes are streaming, and she's not very happy. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Any issues? Oh. Water all over the floor? <laughs> Sorry? 
We had water all over the floor. Water all over the floor? The what? refrigerator. There's water on the floor. <laughs> in the oh, room. no, really? Yeah. I just cleaned it up with a okay. towel. Yeah, you still I see something. I'm sorry. Damn. I walked in. It? It, was, it was completely all the way to the bed. Wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's come back. Let's go to see that lady. Over. Well, the ladies, her eyes are streaming. Do excuse us. Oh. Ladies, are you decent? Sorry, I've got the owner here. Oh, really? That smell is? There's yeah. all dust inside. Oh, shit. There you go. It's just my eyes are tearing. When was that cleaned last? That's a, uh, that's really a daily thing that, um... Daily? It should be, sure, yeah, absolutely. That is not daily. Uh... Look at that. That's why. Ooh. Jesus Christ almighty. No wonder the poor lady's broken out. It's like the back of my throat is all scratchy. Is there an alternative room we can use for the ladies? I'll double check right away. Have a drink downstairs, a little bite to eat, but we can sort something out. Okay. <sighs> what a night. The big problem here is that there's no direction for the hotel, for the restaurant, for the gazebo, not even for the car park. Ben is like a headless chicken that's checked out, and Brian's like this scared school kid that is not qualified to run a fucking beach bar, let alone a hotel on a beach. So... <sighs> this is bad. This is really grim. Brian. Am I wrong? I feel like we blew it tonight. No, oh, man, it's just, it's just what it is, you know? We don't, uh, don't worry about it. Is the chef uh, off tonight? No, he's in the back. He's in the back. Is he <laughs> cooking or...? No. So he's here, but he's not cooking. Hmm. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. Chef, Brian Rutherford, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon. How are you? Uh, let's go somewhere out the uh, line, shall we? I'm lost for words. I just, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. I, I'm, why wouldn't you cook for me? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not a question of me not cooking for you. It's do you want to see what we're doing here and improve? Because I want this to improve. You've been here for how long? Five years. Five years. But you've been cooking for 30, 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. I didn't see you on the line. I didn't see you taste anything. I didn't even see you inspire anybody. This position is killing me in my soul. I've just been doing everything that Eddie wanted. We have too large a menu for the amount of business we do. So if you... I have 120 items on the menu and we do 50 people a night, how much of this am I able to prep on a regular basis to have quality? But you're the executive chef on the menu. Yes, I am. How can you let that food go out with your name above it? Um... You can't just give up and almost, you know, abandon ship before it's sunk. I'm at the end of my rope. You're toast. I'm tired. But you're, you're, you're an experienced guy. Are you OK? Look at me, look at me. Are you OK? Are you on medication? No. Excuse me, can you get me some uh, water, please? Quickly. Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Christ. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. No. Give me a... Jesus Christ. Urgently. What happened? The chef's on the floor. Oh, shit. Can I have some water? You okay? Call 911. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Chef just fell, collapsed. Can I have some water, please? Yeah. And a cold cloth. Yeah, Urgently. Let's try and stay alert. <laughs> look at me, look at me. Brian! I was with the gentleman, we were just standing talking, and unfortunately he just collapsed and banged his head on the back here. I am really pissed off at Gordon. He's stressing everybody out. Everyone seems to be at their boiling point. Has he been stressed out for long? I mean, this has put a lot of stress on all of us. And... What, me being here? Yeah. But do not dare fucking go anywhere near that I put him in that ambulance. Got it. Let me tell you something. 150 items on a fucking menu the size of a fucking shoebox. Can send that man to an early grave, let me tell you. It's like he's 
a dead man walking. Yeah. And what he tried to tell me in a five minute conversation is that you've overburdened him because he does whatever you want. You pay his salary, but you're not behind that line. You have no catering experience. You haven't spent a day in a kitchen. I've never seen anything so fragmented. Okay. It's like you're a little magpie, a little spoiled fucking magpie that's going around picking up little bits of glitter and running back and getting your army to expedite it for you. All that matters right now is that that guy wakes up to morn feeling better. Breakfast. So, no morning swim for me, but at least I can enjoy a good breakfast to start the day. God. That's all they've got to offer. How depressing is that? This is crazy. I've got to find some breakfast. I'm starving, and cold coffee isn't going to do it. But I've heard there's an amazing farmer's market in town, so I'm going to quickly check it out. What a lovely little place. I've heard David from Maison's Kitchen runs a food truck here in his spare time. No deep fried calamari, I hope. I saw the line, I thought, uh -huh. wow. What are you serving? We got quesadillas, best in New Mexico. OK, brilliant. I have a little, little food truck with a buddy of mine, Chris, a little taste of New Mexico. This is one of our favorites right here, the cucumber lime. That's perfect. Little mint. Mm. But 100 degrees outside, that's perfect, right? Yes, it huh? great. My goodness. Man, that's delicious. So what's in the quesadilla? Yeah. Cheese, green yeah. chili, and asadero yeah. cheese. Here you are, my friend. Thank you. Mmm. That is delicious. Yeah. Now, uh, David, that's better than anything I've eaten in the hotel. You know that. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> delicious. Thank you, sir. Uh, the food truck is my creative outlet. It's a place for me to at least express my ideas without having any borders. Well done. I'll see you later. Thank and you, good sir. job. Thank and you delicious. Very much, sir. Enjoy the food, guys. Thank you. Thank you. How are you feeling? Hope you're okay. I think it's important for you to understand the bigger picture. Okay. Yeah, kick in with me. Please, thank you. Kelly, this is some of your guests. I'd like you to share your experiences. Why don't we start off with you first, please? First impressions are, are important to me, and, and the, the very first thing I had to do was sign a, a cleaning waiver. And it, it just it makes the assumption that I'm not going to be clean. That assumption was it was just a tough first impression. Yes, a valid point. Waivers are for bungee jumps. At your peril. Um, that whole thing for me wasn't to make you think that I didn't think that you were clean. It was I had someone come in and throw red wine all over the Venetian plaster, and I thought that I should charge them for that. But you're punishing wasn't... every other guest on well, the back I of the sins mean... of one guest, and it's not right. You know you can't penalize future business on the back of one idiot. So. It appears that there's no thought into what the customer is going to experience. For instance, um, the first thing on a hot day, you want to go into the pool. Um, and we looked out to the pool, and, it, and, it, and it's right now it's the same way. It's got um, a lot of leaves and it's dirty, so it, maybe it's not open, but how can it not be open? Yes, a valid point. Madam, please. We were in the lounge for dinner, and when you were singing, we couldn't have a conversation. It's just not appropriate for an upscale, intimate, fine dining experience. I feel like you're very focused on the performance, but you're not really focused on your guests. Very interesting. Sir? Anything that goes wrong with the restaurant when you're singing, you're too busy singing and not caring about your guests. I would pay you 100 bucks not to sing. As long as you are focused on your singing career and not on your restaurant and hotel career, my wife and I won't be back. I don't agree. I have quite a bit of people that come here to hear me sing. Guest feedback is critical. It's about turning that negativity into something positive. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a very special lady, Nilu Matamid. She is the features director and the senior correspondent for Travel and Leisure magazine. Nilu, um, give us a little insight to your stay, please. One of the things that we look at is whether a hotel has a sense of place whether it's maximizing the value that that beautiful setting that it's in has. You mentioned the pool. That's one great example of a moment where you have a potential great asset here that is being underutilized, and it's kind of underwhelming. There's a reason why hotel schools exist. So wow, this really is historic. Murphy's Hotel has been placed in the National Register of Historic Places. Nice. Wow. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? So, first name is? Kanitha. Kanitha. Nice to meet name. you. Is it always that busy out there? Um, we usually do get pretty busy on the weekends. Incredible. Um, we have about 16 tasting rooms just within walking distance of the hotel. I love how historic this place is, but have you not updated the furniture since 1850? Bloody hell. 
My God, it's like going to your grandma's funeral, my God. <laughs> There definitely is a difference between historic and then tacky and old. What we have is definitely tacky. Looks like someone's died in those chairs. So you've been here for a long time? About a year and a half. And what's wrong with the place? Um, well, management, the owners. The hotel is owned by three guys. They're in their early 30s. There's Kevin, Joel, and Brian. And they really like to use the hotel as their playground. Okay. Um, partying, drinking, giving lap dances to the bar patrons. So, uh, so we just, uh, there's lap dance. Lap dances while they're bartending. The owners, if they continue partying and giving lap dances in the bar and acting how they've been, the place is just going to keep going downhill. We put you in the presidential Ulysses S. Grant room. This is the actual bed that President Grant slept in, except for the mattress. We did get rid of that. What's the glass box for? Um, this is our display room. Display room? Yes, so guests and customers can come up and take a look. When were these last um, replaced? Dreadful. Um, oh, shit. I can't really tell you that. Uh, it sounds like I'm in a museum. So am I a guest or an exhibit? You're a guest. Tell me. Tell me. What are those people doing? Huh? Yes. Come on through, everybody. Take a look inside. You'll see this strong room. Close the door, Emma. Close the door. OK, we're going to be on display today. It's usual for the tourists to come through sometimes. And if a guest checks in and they just, for some reason, forget to close their door, they're going to have people crowded around looking at them. They literally come over and they, hello, how are you? Oh, well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's like a goldfish bowl in here. Ladies, thank god I wasn't in my underpants. <laughs> Is that normal? They just come and have a look around? Um, yeah. You know, um, we normally get complaints, right. and there's really no one that handles that or takes care of it. But there's three owners. Yes. A lot of the time, they're busy bartending or drinking. Or lap dancing. Or lap dancing, exactly. This is insane. Unfortunately. OK, I'm going to unpack. Can this uh, room be off the tour for a while? We'll see what we can do. Thank you. You're welcome. First impressions. I mean, it may be steeped in history, but it smells like the room's steeped in piss.